VoiceAmerica.com. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101 with host Susan Bartlestone. We're so happy you've joined us this weekend. Over the next hour, you'll learn the tips, tricks, and vital information that'll help you keep yourself confident and safe. Now, here's the host of Crime Prevention 101, Susan Bartlestone. Welcome, everybody. Hello, 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 and this is Crime Prevention 101. I'm Susan Bartlestone, and I'm here with one of my partners in crime today, Nancy B. How are you doing, Susan B.? And Nancy's going to help me out a little bit today, and we've got a great guest for you coming up. Um, yeah, I really think she's going to have some fascinating this, things to say. Yeah, and especially um, for any of you that caught last uh, the last show where we talked to the Super Jewel Thief, um, you're going to want to talk to my guest coming up because she is a specialist in alarms. But and uh, just about at this point in time too now, um, if you're pro- since this is uh, the theme for the month of August is property crime because that's when the most crimes occur. You are probably really wanting to have some good home security tips at this point, and uh, some of them you may have already heard from me, but it, they bear repeating again because you can't you can't hear this too much. That is for sure. Yes, definitely. Now, one of the most important concepts about home safety, I mentioned it briefly in an earlier show, home safety is in the card. C-A-R-D-S, crime prevention, surveys, alarms, research, research, which means tips, tactics, tricks, defense sprays for uh, in, in case of an intrusion, and a safety plan. And I want to go over some of the things that um, you can do to make your home safer from burglars. And the first thing I would tell you is every police department has a crime prevention officer or someone who is designated to do crime prevention surveys. And they will come to your home, and this is a free service. They will come to your home, and they will do a crime prevention survey for you, and they will help you determine where your home's security strengths and weaknesses are. And they will also come to your office and survey your office building. And th- this is just a critical thing because you might not even know where you have someplace that uh, would provide easy entry for a burglar. Right, where your weaknesses might be. Exactly. And uh, you can also ask them if they have something called Operation ID. What is that? They will scratch a little uh, ID number on things like your TV or your computers that are very, very difficult to get off. So it'll be easy to track them down if they're stolen, and you can prove that they are yours that way. Hmm. And a lot of times, if you display the Operation ID sticker prominently on your door and window, to a kind of a, an amateur burglar, this might be a real deterrent. Great. So I really, I really urge people to get that crime prevention survey done. And you can just... So do, do you call up or you go there or go down no, to the precinct? No, you call the, just call the precinct and they make an arrangement for them to come to your premises, whatever it is that you want to have surveyed. And That's a terrific public service. It is, and a lot of people don't know about yeah. it, and I really think it's a shame, and, I've, and they don't know about Operation ID, and actually that you can do that on your car, too. They, they can... Um, they can put an identification number in an unobtrusive place on the car, and that helps identify it and help you get your car back. You know, it's interesting. I wonder there may even be um, some sort of a uh, a bonus on your insurance, maybe, if you get one of these uh, surveys completed. You'd have, you know, yeah. A you'd, rebate of some sort. You'd have to check, and um, I know you do if you have an alarm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you'd have to check, but uh, sometimes... Uh, it might it might be just that. I've no, I've, I'm really not that familiar with that, and maybe it's one thing I'm going to jot down to look up and see if that uh, that is the case. So that's one really good tip. And then a second good tip: um, get to know your neighbors and uh, determine which ones that you can call on in an emergency. And especially if you're in an apartment or something like that, it's a good idea to develop an emergency signal, such as flashing lights or noisemakers. You know, something 
that um, that if they hear it or see it and it's prearranged, they know that you're in trouble and they can call the police for you. That really is a great idea. I mean, I know I live in a uh, a large apartment building and you can be so isolated there. You know, everybody just comes and goes and lives their own separate lives and you can be right next door to somebody, not know them. Besides being a nice social uh, thing, it's a very helpful, safe thing to do, just to have that one person, just one person. It's all reassuring. Yeah, it's kind of reassuring yes. that you're not out there on, on your own, and you reciprocate. You know, you'll do it for them. I'll do it for you. Absolutely, and it's also good to have your neighbors look out for your home while you're on vacation, or even while you're at work. You know, have if there's people around to uh, keep an eye on things for you, that is an invaluable safety strategy. What about keeping your radio or TV on? I actually, I'm going to get to that. Yeah, I am going to get to that. Um, I like them put on a timer. Mm. Don't have it on all day. Have it on periodically. Have it cut, flash off and flash on, like a, like the the lights. You, you know, when you go away, they tell you to put lights on a timer, mm-hmm. which is a good idea. Also, you want to put the TV and or a radio on it, so it'll go on for an hour or two and go off and it have have them staggered in different rooms. Don't just put one light on only because a burglar who's going to case the, your house will just see the one light go on and the one light go off. You want, a, you want lights in different parts of the house. You want noise in different parts of the house. That is a really good burglary deterrent. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also, if you are a renter, ask your landlord to provide certain safety features, such as wide-angle peephole, and medical locks on a front door and boat locks and screens. Make sure all your windows have screens. You can get your uh, landlord to do that. You, can, you, sh- you certainly should try because if you've asked him to do it and a burglary occurs because he hasn't done it, mm-hmm. he could be in, held liable for this. You know, mm-hmm. state, state laws and so forth are, are variable, but um, there's a really good chance, especially if you document that you asked him and that he refused. Mm-hmm you might be able to recover some damages through him. If that, I don't know how easy that's a pro, that is as a process, but many landlords are, are willing to, um, to help out. They, you know, they don't want the property being attractive to, to right. it's you know, break doesn't, in. It doesn't yeah. help their property value either. Yeah, that, that's, that's not going to, to um, attract uh, new tenants. No, absolutely. Um, I have a little uh, checklist here, and this is available on my website. If you go to DearSafetySolutions.com, you're going to see the um, vacation safety checklist, and this is some of the things that you might want to do before you go away on that vacation. Oh, are you are you going to go over? I'm any going of those? to. I'll go over. I think I have time to go over a couple of them with us today, and uh, you have to make sure that uh, arrangements have been made to suspend your newspaper service or your mail and or your mail. If you're going to be away for a long period of time, if you don't have a slot that the mail gets put into, if it's just going to get stuck in a mailbox, which, by the way, is not safe, you really shouldn't have an outside mailbox for anything because it's too easy for a thief to go through it and take checks and important uh, papers and credit card statements and everything like that. Do you mean so, even if you own a home and a, and you a have home, a yeah. freestanding mailbox yeah, in you, the corner? You don't, the... you don't want that. You want a slot that they can put the mail through, and you don't want it to be big enough that people can actually see in it. But you want it, you want, you don't want, what you don't want when you're away on vacation are packages and newspapers and stuff like that. Building up, building up, and here's where your trusted neighbor comes in because if you, you know, if you're going to be gone for a long weekend, you're not going to have to call. You don't want to call the newspaper people to um, suspend, suspend it. it. Right. Yeah, that's a hassle. So here's where your your trusty neighbor is uh, can take anything that's piled up in your driveway for you, and that neighbor can also look out for packages and all those advertising materials. Just be sure to bring back the neighbor a nice little souvenir. Bring that neighbor back a uh, Mickey Mouse ears or something from <laughs> Disneyland. Absolutely. And here's uh, my checklist for the timers. Make sure those timers are set. 
Make sure that um, I like to advise that uh, exterior lights are set on a light-sensitive timer switch so that they only go on when it's dark. You don't. Mm. It's a sure tip for a um, for a burglar if they see lights come on in the daytime. They'll Not know, a good thing. They'll know. Yeah, they'll know. They'll know that something's up. Dead giveaway. Yep. They'll mm-hmm. know that you have it on. You'll ha- you, they know you'll have it on set on a timer, and that may mean that you're away. So you don't you don't want to give that. But a light sensitive timer, is, um, exterior lights, will only go on because. And don't forget with daylight saving time, the time that the light would go on is going to get later and later mm-hmm. in summer months. This is a simple. Next one is a simple thing, but you don't know how many times. I've seen this uh, and heard stories. Make sure your doors are locked. Make sure your windows are locked. Make sure that the blinds and the shades and any opaque coverings that you might have are all drawn. That's good. I mean, I, the door would probably be the the most obvious to lock, right? But windows, I think people, I know I don't think about locking my windows when I leave, and that's a great point of entry. Absolutely. And I've heard so many stories about this. And even at my favorite TV show, which is I Take the Thief, and they, it shows these reform burglars breaking into people's homes, even after they warn them about all the security steps that they could have taken, they'll come back a second time and, son of a gun, there's a window open half the time in these people's homes. So it's very easy to just forget about it in the rush of getting out, getting out, and you know, making your um, your flight or whatever. Susan, what about putting a, a stick in the in, in a sliding door, or you know, a piece of wood? Sometimes people put in a window or a sliding door. There's actually a, a better than a stick. There's something called a Charlie bar. It's a kind of a uh, of a metal metal rod that mm-hmm. goes in those doors. A Charlie bar. Charlie bar. Where do you get those? You can get it in pretty much any hardware store. Okay. But don't forget, with a nice, inviting sliding glass door, they can just break right. the window. So there, there are things that you can put over glass that will make it hard to break it, it will make it shatterproof. And that's something, especially if you travel a lot, that's something that you might want to look into. And that's something maybe when you do that uh, crime survey, prevention survey, yes. they would discuss. And it, Because this is local, they can tell you, the police can tell you locally where you can go to get these things. Mm-hmm. Okay, burglar, burglar alarms, I like them. We're going to be talking to an alarm specialist today, and uh, we've got... Uh, We've got her on to give us really good advice about this. Um, so I'm going to um, I'm going to save this tip for when she comes on. Just quickly, um, make sure all those tools and garden implements and ladders are put away and out of sight, because that is a real invitation to a burglar. All right, so we're going to take a break, and when we come back, I'm going to introduce you to Cheryl Waterson. And she is a she is a personal home security specialist and a personal security specialist. Great. News, opinion, your voice counts. Call toll free one eight six six four seven two five seven eight seven one eight six six four seven two fifty seven eighty seven. VoiceAmerica.com. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.fight safe.com for more information you'll also find information there on susan's upcoming crime prevention 101 personal safety teleseminars think fast talk fast fight smart would stress the many opportunities you have to deter or diffuse a criminal encounter and how to use your brains instead of your muscles in a fight look for the new book information or sign up for susan bartlestone's personal safety seminars at www.fightsafe.com today 
Have you ever thought about having your own internet talk show? Well, if you said yes, then click About Us. Then click Be a Host to get more information. Or just call Jeff Spinard at 480-294-6417. Say that again. 480-294-6417. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Okay, and welcome back to Crime Prevention 101. Uh, this Susan Bartlestone, and I've got my partner in crime with me, Nancy B. And we're going to be talking now to my special guest for today. She is a personal security specialist. She has had 20 years of experience as a residential security consultant in the home security business with ADT. And uh, she was one of the first women who worked for ADT as a residential security consultant. She has designed more than 1,000 security systems for customers of all time types. Uh, that's, I think that she met. I think that uh, that was business and uh, commercial and residential. Uh, please welcome Cheryl Waterson. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Susan. Hi, Nancy. And I've really been looking forward to uh, to the call and hopefully providing some vital information and helping to educate people on home security and safety and how how they uh, can not be a victim of crime. So uh, I'm looking forward to this. Absolutely. And now I just wanted to say two things. First of all, um, I had a, an earlier show, Cheryl, where I talked to a super burglar. Uh-huh. He, he robbed more than uh, two to 3,000 homes. And he said one of the things that made him pause was when he saw that the security system was provided by ADT. Mm. And he, he, was, he was one of the elite burglars. So you, you really got your chops in this field. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I just have to tell you that uh, ADT, I think, is the supreme alarm company out there. I've had ADT for over 22 years. So I know the value. I can get them as a sponsor. I'm going absolutely. I have to tell them that. And I also want um, my audience to know today that Cheryl's got a lot more credentials that um, that I want to tell you about now. She is a a certified self-defense instructor with a program called RAD. She's also a certified crime prevention specialist, as I am, and we belong to the same organization, the International. Crime Prevention, International Society of Crime Prevention Practitioners. She is a member of the uh, American Women's Self-Defense Association, and she's launched a personal security solutions company that sells um, protection devices and provides security and self-defense and self-awareness seminars. And I'm hoping that we're going to be able to talk more about that. I'm definitely going to talk about her blog sites, which are amazing. But first, Cheryl, what I thought I would do to start off, uh, since our theme is home safety, uh-huh. you are an expert in this, I've got a few letters that people have written to me via my website, which, uh-huh. which is DearSafetySolutions.com, and they can send me questions, and I will help them come up with um, some options and a safety plan. And I got a number of them of letters about home invasion mm-hmm. as well as burglaries. So I thought maybe we could uh, come up with some suggestions for, for these people. Uh, okay. The first one I got, these, these are two similar ones. Dear Safety Solutions, are home invasions usually the result of chance or opportunity, or is the house or neighborhood scoped out beforehand? And if premeditated, what indications should a homeowner be aware of? And this came from Roseanne Esposito of New York. And I got another very similar one. Uh, I am concerned with home evasion, invasions because there are, have been several in my area. 
I feel very vulnerable, and I hate to answer the door, especially when I'm home alone. Aside from uh, asking for ID through window, if they tell me they're here to read the meter or something like that, uh, what else do you suggest that I do? And this is a concerned mom of triplets. Well, from, uh, from your experience, people, I'm sure you've heard questions like these before. When well, first of all, people, Susan uh, and Nancy, uh, home home invasions are different from burglaries because for, uh, most typical burglars work during the day, and they usually work by themselves. Uh, they want to avoid confrontation. They want to avoid meeting up with the homeowner. Where home invasion, they work at night. They typically work in numbers, uh, usually with another person, and they, in most cases, know either the homeowner or know of the homeowner. Uh, so that, in most cases, is not a chance. They know what they're looking for. They, they uh, know the person. So they're going to confront that person. Uh, they'll come up to the door. They'll knock on the door. Or they will just kick the door in and give no uh, thought whatsoever to a homeowner being there. And a lot of times the homeowner is going to be thrown off guard because, one, they're not expecting uh, an intrusion like that. So, you know, they're caught off guard and they become the victim. So the home invasion, uh, a lot of times, if you're a uh, high-profile personality, you're a wealthy person that people know of, you're a gun dealer, um, they know what you've got inside, and it's worth going through that to get to what you've got. Hmm. Absolutely. There's a a big difference between a burglary and a home invasion. I'm 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 not always clear when people um, write me these letters if that's what they mean, but this particular person, um, she asks about meter readers. Th- those are often um, people come, people that are looking for rape or something like that might use that guise to get in the home. Well, and first of all, of the, uh, first of all, if they're not expecting somebody, don't open the door. Absolutely. Make sure you've got good locks on your door and keep them locked, whether you're home or away. Uh, if somebody does come and you've got a peephole or you've got a side light where you can identify that person, you can always talk to them through the, uh, through the door. But if you're not expecting somebody and they say they need to come into your home, you know, first of all, no. And then second of all, let them know that uh, you'll contact uh, their company because you weren't expecting somebody or let them know that uh, they need to go away or you're going to contact the police. And that's uh, absolutely- that is a typical ploy for somebody to try to get into your home. Cheryl, uh, this is Nancy. If, you have, if you're in an apartment or any place and you have one of those chain locks, is it a good idea to like just open the door a crack with the chain still on it or should you not even do that? Uh, Nancy, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that. Oh, okay. Uh, I was wondering, if you're in an apartment, typically, where you have those chain locks, is it, is it a bad idea to even open up the door a little bit with the chain still on, the, on or should you not even open the door at all? At I, I wouldn't even open the door at all. Um, my, I'm going to jump in here to okay. listen, Cheryl. Don't open the door with a chain lock. It is so easy to, for a reasonably strong person, right, Cheryl? Absolutely. To break a chain lock. So you don't want to do that. Okay. You want that peephole. You're going to make that call. He says, I'm here to read the gas. Right, Cheryl? You're going to right. call the gas company and just ask them, I wasn't notified. Is somebody right. here legitimately? And, and you know, not, Susan, they can read them. all of that information on the outside of your home. They don't have to come into your home. And any delivery, any kind of delivery, I mean, FedEx, whatever, if you're not expecting the package, they'll leave it out, outside. Find out. If they need a signature, find out who it's coming from and verify before you open the door. And Absolutely. That and, and Susan, on the, uh, the apartment, um, I, would, I would highly suggest that, that they have uh, strong locks uh, with reinforced strike plates, uh, and even a, do- a door brace. You can get those door braces from Personal Security Solutions, but that, right. what that does, it reinforces the door, and I think those apartment doors are so flimsy anyway. Could you just explain uh, what, uh, exactly what these door braces are? Yes, I, I, I've never seen them. I don't know what they are. Well, it's, it's a, a brace that goes up underneath the handle of your door, 
and it's usually, um, I'd say about mm, probably two to three feet. But anyway, it uh, it goes up under the handle on your door, and then it, uh, it it's on the floor. So if somebody tries to force your door open, it's it's hitting the the brace on the floor. So it's reinforced the door, so it can't be opened. Mm-hmm. I mean that they're going to have to be really strong. They'll end up breaking the door before they can get the door open. Great, and, and but I I think on apartments especially or older older homes, I think that's a an excellent idea for people to have. Great, and these these devices are are listed on um, what? Give me that website for you. It's your, personalsecuritysolutions.com. dot com. Personal security solutions dot com. Absolutely, I'm going to go there myself after this call. Yeah, okay. me too. Can you talk a little bit about the um, the the kinds of locks? that are the best. I know you don't want anything where you can slip a credit card or a knife or something. Well, through, they've got the, uh, the double box. keyed locks. Uh, they've got the, the uh, locks with the uh, uh, heavy bolt. You want to make sure that your bolt is uh, long enough to withstand somebody kicking the door in. Uh, if, if your ho- home is an older home, I would just have the, uh, the locksmith uh, company come out and just reinforce the uh, the strike plates and the lock. Change the locks up because that is one of the f- uh, first areas that a, an intruder is coming to, and that's usually your front or garage entry doors. So, uh, you know, p- replace your uh, locks with a heavy duty uh, strike plate and a bolt that might be about uh, I'd say two inches or so that goes into the uh, uh, frame of your door. Great. And uh, maybe I'm just like play, playing the um, extra paranoid person here, but with locksmiths, I mean, you can trust them, right? I just sometimes always wonder, they're coming to my home, they're installing this, they have the keys. Uh, is there any anything to be worried about there? Well, I think, Nancy, with anybody, you know, you have to develop that trust. And I I would probably get a a recommendation by somebody, but it's the same as an alarm company. You know, I've been in thousands of people's homes, and, you know, you have to build that trust and that rapport with them, and you know that you're there to help them, you know, get peace of mind. You're there to help protect them and their family. So I think getting a recommendation instead of just pulling somebody out of the phone book is probably a, a better idea. I think that's yes. an excellent idea. And uh-huh. I think if, if you were interested in an ADT um, alarm representative, there's uh, probably a, uh, an 800 number, or you can go on the website and get a, a, a recommendation for someone right that way. Yes. They, actually, uh, on my uh, website, there is an ADT uh, 800 number that somebody can call along with. There's a discount code that they can uh, have a savings that, uh, you know, a representative will come out and talk with them. you got to trust somebody. Yeah, absolutely. You, gotta, you know, back, again, back to the wall, but um, I'm, I'm liking the idea of trusting um, big, well-known. Say that again. I like the idea of trusting well-known, uh, you know, lock and alarm people. I think uh, people. I think we can. I think we can do that one. Absolutely, absolutely, Susan. I feel better. Okay. Now, I, I had talked a little bit earlier about things that you can do um, to prevent people who are scoping out the house. Uh huh. That was some of my some of my earlier suggestions. Let me let's move to another question that I got asked. Uh huh. Kind of similarly, and this again is um, right up your alley here. Um, Dear Safety Solutions, we live in the San Francisco Bay Area where we're experiencing an upswing in residential and commercial robberies. Our, okay, we've got, um, we're going to be coming up to break. Let me read this quickly, and then after the break, we're going to answer this question. Okay. Our home was burglarized a year ago, which changed our comfort level. level and it, are alarm signs in the yard of deterrence? I've read that they cause more problems because a would-be intruder can find out how the alarm is set up by using manuals supplied by various alarm companies. Carol Brown in San Francisco. So uh, hold that thought. We're going to come right back to you. Okay. Okay. 
Ask the experts. Call toll-free right now, 1-866-472-5787. Hello? And ask our all-star team to answer your question. That's 1-866-472-5787. Thank you for calling. VoiceAmerica.com. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.fightsafe.com. Safe.com for more information. You'll also find information there on Susan's upcoming Crime Prevention 101 Personal Safety Teleseminars. Think fast, talk fast, fight smart, which stress the many opportunities you have to deter or defuse a criminal encounter and how to use your brains instead of your muscles in a fight. Look for the new book information or sign up for Susan Bartlestone's Personal Safety Seminars at www.fightsafe.com today. Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. Yeah! If you'd like to talk, call us toll-free right now at 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. And welcome back to Crime Prevention 101. I'm here talking with uh, my guest, Cheryl Watterson, who is a personal security specialist. And we were just uh, reading a little note, for, uh, a little letter sent to me from Carol Brown. Uh, Cheryl, I know you had a comment on that. Why don't you refresh the, view, uh, the listeners? Okay, uh, Carol, Carol uh, had been... Um, her home had been burglarized a year ago. In the Bay Area, right? In the San Francisco Bay Area, and she was wondering whether she should put an alarm sign in her yard because she heard that um, that people can uh, get these schematics to these things very easily. And manuals. And manuals and so forth. So, uh, Cheryl, um, what do you think about this? Well, first of all, uh, Carol Brown, San Francisco, hello. My daughter lives out there, and she just put in an ADT system. So first thing I told her is put your signs up. So anyway, uh, as part of the security protection, when I would meet with a, a client and we set up their security system, before I left their house the night that, that they became an ADT customer, I put their security signs up because that is part of the overall protection. If a burglar is going to hit a particular home, having your sign out there tells them one thing. You break into this home and not only is an alarm going off, noise is going to be made, the homeowner will be alerted, but the police are going to be notified. So most burglars, unlike home invaders, they don't want to have to deal with noise they don't want to get caught. They don't want to confront the homeowner. So put your yard sign up. That is the first line of defense. Uh, a sign in the front yard, a sign in the backyard is what I typically did uh, for the homeowner. And then I would put ADT decals in the windows that were the most vulnerable. I didn't put them on every single window. I let the homeowner do that, but I did put them on vulnerable windows just to start the protection. And I'll tell you what, a lot of people, after I did that, they said they felt better. They felt protected. Now, believe me, that could be just right in their head, but that started the protection for the homeowner. So I, I think putting your signs up is definitely a good idea. The you know, burglar sees that, and they're going to avoid your home. Uh, Cheryl, uh, this is what I had always been taught to mm -hmm. in all my crime prevention training, but the 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 other there's a kind of another opinion out there, and this is mm -hmm. this one I've I've heard from a couple of criminals burglars mm -hmm. who said that if if they can get the schematics 
to certain companies' alarm systems. They can bypass them. And they're fairly easy to do to, to get those schematics. So they suggested that you put a generic sign, like this home protected by uh, hidden motion detectors or something to that effect. Have well, you heard any, have you heard that from? I, you know, I haven't, Susan, but I will tell you this. If it's a professional he, and he really wants inside your home, he's, he's going to get, get there. It, right? And you cannot keep every criminal out there if, if he is a professional and this is his only job. I, You've I have, have more than one line of defense. Absolutely. Right? So the, the, uh, the truly professional, like the fellow you had on beforehand, he may have been so professional that he could have bypassed, but there are ways to set the security system up so you've got the extra protection on your phone lines. They don't know your uh, security code. There, you uh, th there are a lot of things that they really have to know. There's and a lot of add-ons that you can put into a standard security system. Absolutely. That will spoil. Okay, and that was my that was my thought. I think that the amateurs are the ones that, that are going to be deterred, and they are the bulk, really. Really, they are. And they're the stupid criminals that I talk about sometimes and tell the weird stories about them. But the pros, yeah, they, they, can, they have the smarts to, to know how to get around these things, but you can still add some su surprises in there. Absolutely. And, and just because they have a manual that tells them if they did, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that when they open that door that they're going to be able to shut that alarm off before it notifies the authorities to send the police. That's right. I just, I just personally, from my experience, you know, in driving through neighborhoods and from Seattle to South Bend, that seeing a, a, a reputable security alarm sign in the front yard, to me, was more valuable than seeing a generic one because a, a generic one... You know, it's almost, it just doesn't give a lot of value, I think, to the, the security protection. Do you have a, Cheryl, do you have a line where you just sell the stickers? No. <laughs> you, know, you know, people used to ask about that, Nancy, and I would, I would tell them, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll uh, you know, throw in the, uh, you know, security system, but I'll charge you for the signs and stickers. Uh, but, but, uh, but Cheryl, now, I mean, and, uh, and, and I love Nancy's question, but there are other signs. You know, you can't just put a sticker on. You've got to have the tape. You've got to have other things. I mean, you can't, right? right I, I wouldn't, can't, here's, you, the, here's the thing. I wouldn't rely solely on the uh, signs and stickers and not put an alarm system in. I mean, that's part of your, your overall protection. I would, I would never put signs and stickers up that, and not true, do the like security. People like Nancy who don't want to spend for, a, uh, for an alarm system might just want to put the sticker up there. But, but Cheryl, it's more than just stickers, right? There's, there's, uh, alarm, there's tape on the window where the, where the wires are connected. There are other, well, there's other evidence that there's actually a system in the house, a pro or even even a, a talented amateur is going to know if they don't see that. Isn't that right? Or one I, one thing that I would say is I would never give somebody the, the stickers and signs without the system, and that was a policy. Right. So, you know, if, if somebody saw, you know, an ADT sign, that generally meant there was a security system there. Uh, where you. if it's a generic name, you don't really know. And, but if somebody doesn't want to spend the money for a security system, I mean, that's, that's an avenue they could take, but I would not recommend that. I think that, I think that um, you probably, you, a good security consultant could find a reasonable system for a home or apartment owner. Absolutely. Did you, did you do many of these for apartments, by the way? I mean, oh, yeah. Say only I, I did. In the apartments, they were wireless, so when they moved from that apartment, they could take it with them. I love oh, that. Yeah, that, that, is, that is so perfect. And when my daughter graduated from college, first thing I got her when she moved into her apartment was a security system. Wow. Because I worried about her safety. But now, it, now, I felt better that once works. that was in. It's like a motion detector? Uh, well, door sensors uh, and motion detector plus fire protection. But uh, Nancy and Susan, people can 
you know, spend relatively less than two hundred dollars if they want for wow, a, a good. I didn't security. realize that. Now, this this one that you're talking about, Joe, the one that's wireless. Uh huh. Um, is that something that I need to install it? Can I install it myself, or do I need to get someone to put it in for me? Well, you want it monitored, Nancy, where you have the 24-hour protection. You probably want a, a reputable company to come out and do that for you mm-hmm. because you probably don't want to have the time and, two have the knowledge of how to do that. Right. If not I would have idea. it professionally done. And, and don't install safes either, your own safes or, or other security devices. Not a good idea. Right. But this is something that would be transferable if I moved to another apartment in a few years. Absolutely. And, okay. and the one great thing about, and I'm not plugging ADT here, but if you move, ADT will put a, a basic system in your home free because you're already a customer of theirs. So, so wherever you, you go apartment. in the United States, they'll do that for you. Oh, that's great. That's that's great. Absolutely. To know that. If you move from house to house or from an apartment to a house, they'll be yeah, sure. That if you're an ADT terrific. customer, you you have that. And how much again were these wireless systems? Well, uh, I, I've been out of the uh, ADT business for t- uh, two years now, but I would say you would spend probably anywhere from two to three hundred dollars or so. But you know, that's contact ADT; no. they can give you that information. That's great. All right. All right. Uh, I've got a, I read an article, and uh, I'd love to get your comment on this because this, this touches on something that, um, that I definitely want to bring up. This was, uh, said, when a friend of mine built a house a few years ago, he spent $2,200 on a fancy security system. It has motion detectors and glass break sensors, a keypad for punching in codes, and a sign out front announcing the place is rigged. Just one problem. The system is so complicated, he never turns it on. We're going to go take a break now. When we come back, I want to talk about not turning on your burglar alarm system. And okay. It's common that the, uh, the other burglars have been talking about to me earlier today. So let's take a break. Shame on those people. Yes. And we'll be back shortly. Have you ever thought about having your own Internet talk show? Well, if you said yes, then click About Us. Then click Be a Host to get more information. Or just call Jeff Spinard at 480-294-6417. Say that again? 480-294-6417. VoiceAmerica.com. Divorce, child custody, support, and visitation, division of property, attorneys, court. Just the thought of divorce is stressful enough. Never mind the combative, destructive, and expensive process. Is there a better way? Yes, divorce mediation. On Divorce Mediation, Myths and Facts, host Philip Mulford, one of the country's top divorce mediators, will discuss this incredibly successful alternative. Formerly a practicing attorney, Philip will explore the myths and facts about a process that has kept his clients out of court and saved them thousands of dollars. If you aren't familiar with divorce mediation or your lawyer has told you it's not appropriate for your case this show is for you after listening to divorce mediation myths and facts you'll tell anyone considering the divorce go to mediation first divorce mediation changing the culture of divorce after more than 17 years experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men crime prevention and personal safety expert susan bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly ideally within 20 seconds Potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories. Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, how to respond to danger in 20 seconds or less. Check out www.fightsafe.com for more information. You'll also find information there on Susan's upcoming Crime Prevention 101 Personal Safety Teleseminars. Think fast, talk fast, fight smart, which stress the many opportunities you have to deter or defuse a criminal encounter and how to use your brains instead of your muscles in a fight. Look for the new book information or sign up for Susan Bartlestone's personal safety seminars at www.fightsafe.com today. News. News. Opinion. 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 Opinion.
Your voice counts. Call toll-free 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. And. Welcome back again to Crime Prevention 101. We're talking with uh, security personal security specialist, Cheryl Waterson. And before we went on break, we were talking about the fact that you can put the fanciest burglar alarm system in your home. But if you don't turn it on, if it's too complicated, you're not going to, and you don't turn it on, it's not going to be of any use. Would you, would you say, Cheryl, that that was one of the most important tips that you could give somebody? Yes, and uh, what I would also say, Susan, is shame on the people who worked with those customers because when uh, when I put a security system in for a client, that was one of the things that not only my installer went through, but I went through was training people. And there's a, a you know a couple of days that they have free where they can make all the mistakes they want if they want to set it up that way. But the the thing is, you have to start using that security system. And they're so easy. I mean, honestly, if you use your security system for, you know, two weeks straight, it becomes a habit. And it is a habit that you will not be without. When I leave, my alarm is on. When I come home, it's right there. It automatically gets shut off. There's a keypad in the bedroom. And I always had people put put a keypad in the bedroom, uh, especially if a husband traveled or, um you know, it was a two-story home, but uh, just being able to access it, see what's happening, you know, using it is so easy. And for someone not to use it, it's because they weren't trained properly or they're afraid they're going to set it off or maybe they did set it off once or twice. But, you know, you can always avoid doing that. You can make a mistake or two because, uh you know, the alarm company is going to call back to verify it before they send the police. Oh, that's right. That, that's, this is Nancy, and I think uh, that's, that's just a great piece of information to realize that if you're going to get such a system put in, you need to make sure you ask that company to give you training. Absolutely. Because people may not even think about it. They may think, oh, you know, this is a no-brainer. Of course I know how to do that. And, and it's not. You know, it still is something that's uh, a new device to you. It's technology, and too. Say, you know, a habit yes. takes two to three weeks to, to really ingrain. So I think that's wonderful. It's like it's really not complete until you've gotten that training to make well, it second uh, nature. Nancy, when, uh, when the technician leaves, and, you know, you start using your security system right from the get-go, it also becomes a friend. I mean, when you come home, you've got your alarm already set, so as you open the door, you know you're walking into a safe home. Yeah. If you say, oh, I'll start using it when, you know, I do this or that, then you're going to forget. You're not going to remember there's too many other things that will get in the way. So you have to start using it right away. Have a representative come back out if you don't feel like you are familiar enough with it or, or didn't catch how to use it initially. Mm-hmm. Excellent point, and excellent point, Nancy B. Now, Cheryl, I, I want to talk a little bit uh, about where people can get resources have for information on home safety and personal safety, and you are the host of two absolutely extraordinary blog sites. Thank you. Uh, one is Home Security 911, is that correct? Yes. Dot uh-huh. com. And the other one is SelfDefenseWithAnAttitude.com. Yes. And I went, I've been perusing both of them quite extensively, getting research for my shows coming up. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. And I saw a great, uh, two really great um, pieces that I like. And these are, and she's got videos on these websites. Uh, our blog, our, I mean, they're blog sites, but she's got videos. 
She's got all kinds of articles. This one I particularly liked, Home Burglaries, home burglaries on the Rise Throughout the U.S., Make Your Home a Difficult Target, Part 1 and Part 2. That's with, great. With what, a, what is the website again? This one is on homesecurity911.com. Okay, thanks. And there's a lot of of home uh, safety tips and videos on that one for the, for those of you like our friend in in San Francisco who is a little nervous about it being um, burglared. Mm -hmm. She's also got Cheryl also has self defense with an attitude, um, and this she's got information there on carjacking and conflict avoidance and fighting back, of course. Personal protection products, hair hair grab releases, um, safety awareness training. She happens to have a really good article on how to make a safety plan, which I wrote for her. <laughs> oh, that is that is an awesome plan. <laughs> yes. a little plus promotion there, a little, but little good information. Little, that's how I came came upon her and knew I had to have her on this show. Um, there's also a wonderful article on panic rooms. And what I'm going to do, because I like to give my listeners access to some of this information, on my own personal website, DearSafetySolutions.com, I am going to put a link to Cheryl's two blog sites and your um, and any other website. Uh, there's another website I think you're just developing. Uh, personal Security Solutions should be finished right. within the week. All right, I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put links to her two blog sites and her website. So that was homesecurity911.com, selfdefensewithanattitude.com, and personalsecuritysolutions.com. I'm going to have those there. May I just ask a question? What what is a panic room? Ah, Cheryl, do you want to jump in on sure. this? Uh, a panic room would be uh, a, a room inside your home, usually uh, near the master bedroom. Uh, it's a reinforced room where people would meet family members. If there was a home invasion, say you were asleep during the, the night, if there's a home invasion, then everybody is supposed to meet into that room. And it, typically that uh, that room would have reinforced door, uh, core uh, wood doors, would have excellent locks. You'd have things inside your room that you could immediately uh, notify the authorities Your with. Cell phone. It, it's usually only, only uh, for a short time that you'll be in that room, and that's till the uh, police get there. Just so, yeah, just okay. so you can have a haven um, while the invaders are in the home, you have a place to, to uh, hide out until you can get some help. Right. Mm -hmm. I thought it, that was a great article, so I thought I'm going to put I'll put that one, uh, a link to that on, on, my, um, on my own personal website. I'm going to put a link to the safety plan article that I wrote for Cheryl's blog site. I'm also going to have, Cheryl, I'm, I'm definitely going to have you back to talk about some of the other things that you're doing with okay. the personal security. We're going to, my background is in self-defense teaching and so forth, so we're going to have a great time talking about that together. Um, I just want to uh, remind everyone out there that uh, if you've got a comment or a question about today's show or a question you'd like to, um, to ask Cheryl, uh, you can do it through her website and you can ask me questions through my Dear Safety Solutions website. And if you'd like to um, read this question on the air with me, we might be able to work that out schedule-wise. Just go to my website and post your question on the home page in the response box there. I'd like to also have a message to any of you who are already a survivor of the kind of crime that we talked about on the show today or any kind of crime at all or violence. Please, please understand nothing that happened to you was your fault. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. if you think that you used bad judgment in a situation, and left yourself vulnerable, that is never an excuse for a crime or for violence. Absolutely. And this is really, really important. Please, I want you to call yourself a survivor and not a victim, and understand that with the proper professional help, you can put what happened to you into perspective and get on with your life, and you can heal. Cheryl, thank Excellent. you so much. You're, you're welcome. And thank you, uh, Nancy and Susan, for 
you know, letting me talk about uh, how to protect your home and family. I think Thanks, that's Cheryl. something everybody should do. And next week, Cheryl, I'm going to be talking to a woman who had a difficult situation to face and some hard choices to make. And uh, her, her response to a home invasion was to get a gun. So I think you're going to find that uh, a very compelling show. She has definitely triumphed over her bad situation. So everybody, stay tuned and stay safe. Yes. There you go. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. We hope you got some useful information and inspiration this week on Crime Prevention 101. Susan Bartlestone invites you to join us again next Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time and 2 p.m. Eastern Time here on Voice America. Have a great weekend and a safe weekend.